Blake, how do you feel about underwear? Underwear like car warranties is a scam. Welcome to the Church Gear Podcast, where we pull the tech out of the booth and onto the stage to share the most outlandish stories and hidden wisdom from the tech trenches. And now, here are your hosts. I'm your host, Blake Hodges, a man who could live in a Roman toga if I could, and I'm here with my co-host, who wears a minimum of three pairs of underwear at all hours of the day, Toby Walters. Why would I wear three pairs of underwear? I, I don't know. I think you're compensating Just for, for something. Just for safety's sake. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot to protect <laughs> down there, I guess. This is going to be one of those like opening episodes where we're just hoping everything doesn't go off the rails as we're getting into underwear talk here. We're, we're getting canceled already. Yeah, but uh, I thought of the story the other the other day, and my wife was like, "Oh, have you told that one on the podcast?" And I oh, so this is a Shelly endorsed story. Is she who gave the thumbs up? All right. So uh, I like a lot of our guests got into tech in uh, like the youth group, middle school time frame. And um, around that same time, I got involved in drama at school. Blake, were you in, ever in drama? Yeah, I got in a lot of trouble. Oh, you mean like the club? Um, No, no. Oh, actually, I did do a play. We'll save that for another time. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I was interested in being on stage, but also the technical aspects. But this uh, story really centers around me being on stage for this one production. And I didn't cue you up f- for this, but you said Roman Toga. And the play we did was called Toga, Toga, Toga. No way. <laughs> yeah. So was, have you ever heard of the movie Animal House? I know you haven't. I okay. have heard of it. What? I heard it's pretty vulgar and this Christian man has never seen it. Well, it's it was made in like 1978. So it's like 1978 vulgar. Oh, so it's pretty bad. So you're going to hell the moment you turn it on. <laughs> no, it's actually the, the reverse. Whereas movies used to be pretty mild compared to today's standards. Oh, they've only gotten worse? They've only gotten worse, Blake. Your generation is ruining... America, the oh, world. So then Toga 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 is like they said darn and it got rated R? Exactly. Okay, got it. So in this play, it was Toga 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 and it was centered around like uh, uh, fraternities and what's the other one? Sororities. Uh, sororities. Yeah, there we go. And so as middle school kids were playing college students in this, you know, very fun, innocent uh, uh, middle school version of Animal House. <laughs> what could go wrong? I know. So we're often wearing togas in this play. And there was a scene where I, my character was supposed to just run across stage with a spray bottle of water chasing a girl. Like it was just sort of this funny interruption into the, the, the dramatic moment. And so I'm backstage. It's early on in the play. I'm backstage. We're kind of hanging out the people that aren't out on set right now. And one of my friends, you're wearing togas. You're definitely hanging out. (laughs) Well, there you go. So I made some joke that I wore polka dot boxers that day. And so one of my friends is like, polka dot boxers? He said, well, I dare you to do your scene in your polka dot boxers. And nothing else? Well, I had a t-shirt on also. So he said, t-shirt and polka dot boxers. And Blake, do I have any shame? No, Toby has absolutely zero shame in his body. So seventh grade Toby thought like, oh, perfect. A dare? Yes, let's do it. So I, you know, take it my... It would have been so fun being your friend in middle school. Yeah. You would have just done anything. Totally. So take my pants off. I've got my polka dot boxers on and my t-shirt. And when my scene comes up, and I kind of uh, prepared this in my head that I was going to do it this way, I ran, like, the girl came before me out the side door, and she started running off across the stage, and then I came behind her running through that door and across the stage. And when I got to the middle of the stage... I turned toward the audience and it was like that, what is that? That fourth wall is broken. Oh yeah, when you you talk directly to the audience, yeah. So I suddenly realized there was a live audience and got this. And your mother is sitting in this audience. (laughs) I don't don't think my parents were there that night. They would have been there a different night. That explains how you made it through the story without getting murdered. Yes. So actually my dad would be like, that's my son. (laughs) But I, I see the audience and I'm all of a sudden aware and I make this big show of covering myself and then run off stage. And of course, everybody thought it was hilarious. The whole whole audience broke out in laughter. And the next day, we come back to school and our teacher is, um, you know, class starts and he says, okay, let's, let's talk about last night. He said, Toby. <laughs> he said, you would be in trouble for that, but 
that was pretty darn funny. So I'm going to let you <laughs> let you off with a pass. Oh, uh, you got <laughs> off on the hilarious. Yes. So uh, fast forward, I don't know, 15 years. And when I met my wife, Shelly, I told her this story. And as I'm telling the story, you could just see this eye widening expression of recognition on her face. Oh no. And she said, I saw you in the audience that night. I was there that night in the audience. She married the polka dot underwear. She man. sure did. And can you imagine if someone like leaned over to her and was like, yep, that's your future husband up there in his underwear. I think she would have moved to Alaska right then. It's quite possible. So, okay. Well, you know, someone else who I'd really love to see in polka dot underwear <laughs> running across the stage on Sunday morning, now introducing the technical director at Red Rocks Church, Mark Ray. Mark, would you be down to run across the stage to bring the pastor his mic in your polka dot underwear? I mean, if I had to, I would. I mean, most uh, production guys are trying to do the opposite of that. They're trying to wear all black yeah. so they blend in. Well, has anyone ever done that? Like worn all black head to toe even and been on stage? Like, do they just not exist? Yeah, stage hands, like production people. That's why they wear all black. So they're not noticed right. on stage. I'm talking the like face covering too. Like, have we ever tried oh, that? No. That just sounds creepy <laughs> and scary. That's like uh, the next uh, Scream movie. That actually would be really good. Yeah, I'm really committed to the production. I know. It's it's the production guy. He's the one who did it. And he's he was always behind the scenes <laughs> with the mask. Okay. Um, so, Mark, quite an intro for you to come in on. Are you just like, you know what? Yeah, I need to I, turn this off. I'm <laughs> done with these people. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm heading out. Yeah. <laughs> or no, this is That's getting amazing. interesting. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's do the five truths and a lie. Um We've I've been keeping track of these, and I'm not going to say the exact results, but let's just say, Toby, the guests have been kicking our butts. So we're mm. going to have to really work it here. I'm not surprised. We're kind of idiots. Well, one of us. <laughs> we won't say which one. Number one, I was once a school bus driver. Hmm. Number two, I grew up playing five instruments. Hmm. Yeah, I, I buy that one. Yeah. Number three, I have gained over 60 pounds since I started working out. How much did he weigh before? I was, like, was going to say, Mark, you 40 like, pounds? You look like you weigh a buck, a buck 20, so you were 60 <laughs> pounds. Now, don't they say that uh, Zoom like subtracts 20 pounds? So, Oh, man, I'm going to do all my interactions on Zoom now. <laughs> all right. Number four, I've been skydiving three times. Okay. Number five, I've been running production at Red Rocks Church for 17 years. I'm trying to figure out if Red Rocks Church is 17 years old. I'm trying to figure out if Mark is old enough to have been running it for 17 <laughs> if, years. If Mark's 17 years old. Mark, he, he looks young. He's got just that, barely. Yeah, that baby skin. To have gained 60 pounds and worked there for 17 years, I want you to be 60 years old somehow. It'll make me feel like there's like life has potential. Look how good this guy can look at 60. <laughs> that would be amazing. Man. All right, if if the uh, gain 60 pounds is true, I'm going to need a before and after shot. Like Same. Yeah, it's going to be like Sylvester Stallone under there. This is already the most inspiring <laughs> episode for me. Number six, and finally, did a lip sync competition on stage in college to NSYNC's Bye Bye Bye. And Blake, congratulations for saying NSYNC this time instead of spelling it N-S-Y-N-C, like you did last time it <laughs> appeared on a podcast. I'm going to be honest. Mark, I think that's the only time I actually felt embarrassed because I I grew up on NSYNC. I should have known NSYNC. <laughs> Timberlake is rolling over in his grave. Who killed Timberlake? <laughs> All okay. right. Oh, man. There's some good stuff in here. This I, is fun. I'm going to say the lies number three. He can't have gained 60 pounds. And uh, I mean, I'm just going back to my days in drama, like running across stage in my underwear. Like this is the first production guy I feel like would actually do that. Still in a kindred uh, spirit, huh? I mean, a production guy being in a lip sync competition? Wow. Okay. Well, I can't choose yours because... You could. I can't. I can't swim in the same any... circle as you, Blake. Um, I'm going to say he has not been skydiving three times because that's insane, and I'm scared of heights. So, All right. We're locked in, Mark. What's your lie? My lie is I have not been skydiving three times. Oh, Blake. Bow. <laughs> bow to my... Awesomeness. Dang it, Mark. You couldn't pay me to skydive, I don't think. You're going to have to start doing the podcast in your polka dot underwear now, Blake. Who says I'm not already? <laughs> Mark, uh, okay, that's a fascinating question because me and Toby both hate heights as well. We have, we've we've been on gear runs together where you have nothing to do, and so we've run these numbers. Like, how much would it cost to get you to, to jump out of a plane? What do you think the number is for you? Is it $5 million, $20 million, $2 Ooh. billion? I mean, I'd do it for, for a million probably. Okay. I'd do it for a million. Yep. 
I think I'd do it for a million, but I would need someone with me. Like I would need someone to oh, literally yeah, yeah. push me out of the mm-hmm. plane. Yeah. I mean, we could make you do it. The rest of church gear just gathers up and like bounds and gags you and throws you out of a plane and pulls the ripcord. Like Toby, I really think I could take all the church gear by myself. <laughs> I really could. That's cute. But you haven't gained 60 pounds since you started working out. Only 30 pounds <laughs> of fat. So Mark, you've really gained 60 pounds of muscle? Yeah, somewhere in there. Um, I used to weigh about 150 um, in high school, college, and then I got married. Started working out after we got married. Um, and then and I just didn't really stop. Okay, so, I mean, this isn't a fitness can, podcast. But can you flex your guns real quick? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Do, do you have, if you had to boil it down to one tip on like, this is how I got healthier, because I'm, I'm trying to be inspired here. I'm trying to follow you. I'm up 20 pounds. What, what did you do? That What was the biggest thing that got you to that 60 pounds of muscle? Cons- consistency. Mm. I do. I go to the gym at least four or five days a week. That's impressive. At 5 a.m. Oh, a 5 a.m. Yeah, Lee. I feel like MXU needs to use him as their poster child for the 75-day challenge. You should. Like, he's the after (laughs) model. Yes. Um, Man. Okay. So, consistency. So, I can consistently go one day a week to the gym, and that'll work? I mean, yeah, it's better than nothing, right? That's true. So, how did you get suckered into doing a lip sync competition on stage for NSYNC? Or was that actually super fun? It was actually a lot of fun. So, um, it was myself and, like, four other girls... And the lip sync competition was called O'Malley's Alley. And we had like YouTube or something. I'm not sure YouTube was around then. We had found the video for Darren's dance grooves. And so we learned it for like weeks beforehand. Um, and so then it was like a lip sync competition. So a bunch of other, you know, groups and acts went up as well. And uh, we learned the dance and we did like a chorus and a verse, something like that. So. And did you play like a specific member of NSYNC yourself? No, just like in the center, like middle guy and then the girls on the, the sides. So you were Timberlake. <laughs> kind of, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, if it's not too forward for me to ask, if you've been at Red Rocks for 17 years, how old are you? Because I'm in this phase of life where I think everyone just is my age, typically if they look kind of like my age, but you can't be 30 if you've been working there for 17 years. So how old are you actually? So I uh, serving for 17 years. The church is 18 years old. Just okay. turned 18 in January. I'm 38. So I started serving when I was 21. I'm going to put a picture of Mark on my, on my bedroom wall. This is my thing to uh-huh. aspire to yeah, as I get older. He is <laughs> aging much, much better than I'm, you, Blake. I'm already uh, falling behind at 10 years below. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you've been at Red Rocks for 17 years now, give us, give us a little snapshot of your background, how you ended up there. And then it's been quite a ride since. Yeah, it sure has. Um, so I grew up in Minneapolis, um, went to a small church uh, north of Minneapolis. That's kind of where I got my start in production was my dad was a, a volunteer worship pastor there for like, you know, 20, 30 years, something like that. And um, when I was in high school, he was like, hey, you got to start playing some instruments because I, I want to schedule you. I was like, cool. All right. So I started playing more instruments and then, you know, learned the soundboard in the back. Um, and then did that for a while and then moved to Colorado in 2005. Um, and from there, like the first week, uh, it was August, 2005, first week, my college roommates were like, Hey, we're gonna go check out this church called Red Rocks. You want to come with us? And I was like, sure. Great. I have a home church out here. So might as well go try it out. So we all went up, um, to a place called Heritage Square, which is a Victorian style, um, theme park, amusement park where, it was like old rundown buildings and you had to walk like a half a mile to get to the building and it was creepy and you're like out of breath because I, I was on the side of a mountain too. So you're like out, like out of breath walking up to the church. That sounds like a horror so, film. <laughs> it, it was. I was like, what? I'm like, what are we going into? Is this a cult? Like, what is this? Is this um, a cult? So, <laughs> as he walks into his now 17 years of workplace yeah, and church. Exactly. So I walked in there and obviously the church like felt great. Um, the average age at the time was like maybe 25 years old. Um, and so I sat through the service and loved it. And then towards the end of the service, um, when they did the closing announcements, one of the pastors got on stage and was like, Hey, we need help in the production booth. If anyone has like any experience or wants to help out. And I was like, sure, I can push some failures up and down. (laughs) Um, so I did that, uh, kind of volunteered, uh, for four years throughout college. And then one year after college, after I got a job as an accountant, um, and then got hired on. About 13 years ago, this past, or yeah, 13 years ago, um, this spring. So you've been, you've been officially working there for 13 years. 
Correct. I'm staffed for the 13 years. Yep. So you were an accountant. I totally see that. You are so clean cut. Like I would trust this man with my taxes <laughs> any day. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not good at them, huh? No, I and, hated that. And I'm wondering, did you uh, start working out because you realized I'm going to need to get into better shape to walk up to church in the future? Oh, yeah. Is it yeah, still that def- difficult? Definitely part of it. No, no, no. So that was obviously a long time ago. That, that campus shut down um, in, I think, 2018 because um, they closed the park down. So we had to like vacate the premises. Um, so we had to launch more campuses. And yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. Um, and there's a lot of stories that go with, you know, doing church in a pole barn um, that we can talk about later. But um yeah it was no I, I mean i started working out because i was like well I, i'm super skinny i don't like being skinny anymore so <laughs> i like, just started working out did crossfit for a couple of years then stopped that because i had a kid and got too tired to continue waking up early to do crossfit and so stopped that like six years ago and then just kept going and doing my own thing mm, it definitely feels like the kid puts a pause on your life guys i, I don't know about this blake i want you to look like mark in nine years you, you know can, what? You can do it. That's my big, hairy, audacious goal. That's right. Jim Collins, I got this. That's right. Ten years. Um, <laughs> well, you said there was some kind of crazy stories from doing church in a pole barn. Uh, I'd love to hear one now if you've got one. I mean, from back in the day when you were doing those. Oh, gosh. If that's yeah, too- I mean, so, gosh. Uh, I mean, I have a couple. Um, so it, because it was in a pole barn and it was kind of like there's other, you know, businesses, small businesses in that Victorian kind of shopping area. Um, and one of them was like a haunted house. So every Halloween, there would be, you know, we have a, our, you know, two, one or two PM services, like five or 6 PM, whatever it was. And there'd be a haunted house, like next door to the pole barn where we're having church. And every once in a while during the sermon, you'd hear this chainsaw start up and girls <laughs> screaming. <laughs> it was amazing. And we loved it. And it was just like, I don't know. Just part of Red Rocks that like I kind of miss was the old like creepiness, kind of like what's going to happen today? We don't know. We're going to have power, maybe we don't know. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of one story. It's kind of funny. That's amazing. I can't. I can only imagine. Like, all right, guys, we're going to come down to the front. We're going to really, you know, we're going to pray this. Out. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that, you know, that could make you think, though, it's time to get saved when you hear that. that oh, good chainsaw. point. Yeah, <laughs> that's an altar call right there. That's that's quite the art, altar call. So, Mark, uh, just before this episode, I was talking to one of the other guys here at Church Gear, and he said, oh, who's on the podcast today? And I said, well, we got one of the production guys from Red Rocks, and he used to work at Provident Records, and said, oh, cool, Red Rocks was one of our artists. And so I, I feel like Red Rocks kind of like became this uh, cultural phenomenon during covid um, give us a little bit of the background. Like how did Red Rocks become such a household name as far as like, it's like Elevation, Red Rocks, Gateway, you know, are you guys just writing, recording amazing songs? You got amazing artists. Is is it just God's work there or what's going on? Toby, the Red answer Rocks? is in front of us. It's Mark Ray, dude. <laughs> and his gun. It's, yes. It's my biceps. Um, <laughs> so to, uh, I guess to kind of understand Red Rocks and kind of where we came from, obviously the pole barn is a huge part of it. Um, but you know, in the early days, we were really kind of scrappy running a gun. We didn't, uh, we didn't take ourselves too seriously. Um, and so I actually kind of got big, you know, before COVID, um, when it got big in numbers, um, in person, um, we kind of want to flip the script a little bit and be a little bit more out there as far as what, uh, churches were known for. We didn't take ourselves too seriously. And so we were, to make ourselves like stand out, we made rap videos, parody videos, like video skits for sermon series. And they were just, they were funny. And we just didn't hold back. And it was amazing. And so I think a lot of like the draw for Red Rocks, obviously the pole barn in a creepy theme park. The second part of that was um, just like the the YouTube aspect and like the funniness. And we didn't dig, take ourselves too seriously. And we, we, um, we just laugh at ourselves all the time. And so every once in a while we, we, you know, I'd be sitting by the front doors and greeting people and whatever. And they'd be like, Oh, like how, you know, welcome. How'd you hear about Red Rocks? They're like, Oh yeah, I saw your rap video. I'm like, cool, man. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't really in the videos. I had like a cameo, I think in one of them, but um, it was just like, that was just what we did. And so um, we just didn't take ourselves too seriously. And that was awesome. So as far as COVID goes, we, uh, you know, we, we kind of took what we were doing well and then just made it better. 
Um, so we already had a decent online presence. Um, whereas I don't know how many, I don't want to throw numbers out there, but there's a lot of thousands and thousands of people every single week tuning in online for Red Rocks um, online campus. And that's before COVID. So, be- yeah, before okay, COVID. Okay, so you're already built and ready. Okay. Yeah, so we and we had already kind of made that our sweet sauce, if you will. So once COVID hit, um, we just kind of like lean into that more. We're like, okay, well, our other campuses are down. We have four campuses in Denver. Let's, you know, take some more lighting fixtures, maybe some more cameras, do whatever we can to make the recording um, on stage with, you know, no audience, just awesome. So we added some more fixtures that we already had. Um, We didn't purchase any more gear for that. We just kind of repurposed things um, and just made made it look sweet and made it it really intentional for the online campus. and so I think, and obviously, you know, Red Rocks Worship is a huge presence now and they're touring and writing albums. And the last album they had was awesome. Um, they just recorded another album, live album at our Littleton campus too, I think last December. So, um, yeah, I mean, all the above of what you, what you guys were saying is kind of, you know, a culmination, a lot of things. Um, a lot of good songwriting from Red Rocks Worship. The leadership there is awesome. And we've, we kind of just made, it. we kind of, we didn't want to go too, I don't know, difficult. We, we try to keep things simple. When you make things difficult in production, you're going to end up, you know, down the toilet. <laughs> so uh, you figure it out really quickly. <laughs> Blake and I were in Denver uh, just a few months back in October, and uh, we did a site tour. I believe it was a Littleton campus. We got to yep. tour. Um, Blake, I'm just going to throw him under the bus. He stayed back at the Airbnb to clean and do the checkout procedure. We were like, Blake, would you rather stay and clean or would you rather go to Red Rocks? And what'd you say, Blake? I said, I'd rather take the extra hour of sleep that came with that because we'd stayed up <laughs> Princess some ungodly needs hour uh, with some friends that <laughs> night. So I was very tired. So uh, Dave Rodiger and I got a tour. And as you're talking about your online presence, you know, over COVID, especially like adding lights and things you already had and creating this larger than life experience, it was shocking for us to see in real life, it's not that big a production. It's not that big a room. Like yeah. you guys were even pretty, pretty open about, yeah, we've kind of cobbled together everything we've had here. So can you talk about kind of the, uh, you know, the culture of doing high production level with low budget dollars and just using what you got to make it happen? Totally. Yeah. That's kind of our MO. Um, even from the early days is, uh, we, you know, we ran a pretty lean staff, uh, on the early days. Um, I think I got hired on when we were maybe like 3000 people or so. And so um, that was kind of our MO and that's kind of what the MO should be for a lot of other churches, you know, looking to grow and looking to help their production value is, you know, take what you have, what God's given you the resources, time, people, whatever, and do the best job you can with it. Um, And so what we did, we, I mean, you said it right. We didn't, we didn't purchase anything else for COVID really. I think we had kind of all the gear. We just got really intentional with what we shot. Well, our our lighting specifically is programmed in a way where you don't typically need to run, you know, CC uh, CCUs or like, you know, a bunch of shading stuff. The idea for our camera ops is just to shoot, frame, focus, and then call it good. Um, in my opinion, if you're if you're having to shade a bunch then you're not doing it right. That's <laughs> just my opinion. Um, and for context, and kind of, for people that are watching online, how how many people does your broadcast campus seat? Seat? Yeah. Oh, a um, thousand maybe. And it's an old so dinner like theater, right? It's an old dinner theater. Um, we've re- renovated a lot, um, did a lot of work to it to make it you know look like a, a church, not a, not a dinner theater. Um, I mean, it used to have like this old like red, curtains in the back and a red carpet and let me like think of like you know 1985 like carpet and dinner theater it was that and it's um, a it's a tight 1000 in there if you're it is if you're fitting all the seats um you guys don't yeah. have like stadium seating you're using like old hotel chairs it look like like banquet chairs yeah pretty much yep and then tell us about your line array because i know the guys were mentioning like haven't you kind of pieced together some different systems to create your line array no yeah yeah, so in so in our Golden Campus, you know, shut down twenty eighteen or so, we had bought um, it's an outline mini compass. I'm not sure they even make that anymore. 
Outline is still a company. Um, they have the GTO as well, which they use at Red Rocks Amphitheater and some other you know venues. Um, so Outline Mini Compass, we, we installed that at our Golden Campus. And then once that shut down, we moved that over to our Littleton Campus. So I think that's our P, our main PA is our Outline Mini Compass. And we have like, I think Nexo subs, maybe some other custom subs that are thrown in there um, from a, a local vendor that we have worked with for you know 10 plus years. Um, so it, is, it kind of pieced together a little bit. Yeah, but that's because, you know, we spent a lot of money on the PA at Golden and it worked for the room. So uh, we we used it. So I love hearing that specific example because when I'll hear people say like, ah, oh, you know, we just kind of bootstrapped it and we made it work. I'm like, okay, great, great principle. How does that work in actual tactics, like tactile, real examples? That's that's a really good one. Um, do you have any other examples for like an advice for other similar, similarly sized churches that are trying to do the same? I mean, everyone's seeing these rap videos and they're like, that's funny. Then they see these production videos, which y'all are doing, and they're like, that's amazing. I want to do that, but I but I bet I can't. I don't I bet I don't have the budget. Like, but you guys are doing it, you know, minus the budget. So what's some other examples or ways you guys are really making that happen? Um, you know, we lean into our our people a lot. We've we really we have a lot, lot of great volunteers, a lot of great, you know, production staff that train our volunteers to for a level of excellence, you know, that we kind of require for every single Sunday for weekend recording um and so for for as far as manpower goes we almost all camera shots that you see on our red rocks online campus or oh i think almost all volunteers and there might be a few staff members thrown in there um and even like the video directors and like some of those guys are volunteers wow. that just yeah we we've really and that's just i mean not because we don't want to as a staff member we we could obviously but just because of the people that we put in place really excel in those areas. And so we're like, yeah, run with it. Like, we'll, we'll help you. We can, you know, run with things and help fix things if we need to. But like, if, if you want to, you know, VD and all that jazz, then um, like, let's do it. And so we, we train up a little bit here and there and we kind of rotate between two video directors right now. Um, one's kind of part-time staff and one is not, um, just she's just volunteer but so it sounds like it's um, the people over the gear it sounds like y'all have equi- equipped everybody so much that it's like that's how you're making the magic happen kind of yeah I mean, obviously the gear is awesome too and you know we 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 want to make it look good and it, you know a lot of a lot of smaller churches are or you know they want to they want to do cool things they want cool lights but then they don't want to spend the money for it <laughs> i'm like well that, that doesn't really work that way but okay <laughs> um and so we, you know, we have, like I said before, we we took some lights from other campuses during COVID and moved into our Littleton location and then kind of kept them there for the most part. Um, and so, um, yeah, I mean, we, when the cam- the cameras we're using as well, like I've seen, I've seen a bunch of other churches, high end, big mega churches that spend, that have spent a lot more than we have in cameras and lighting and you name it. Um, and it just, it doesn't like, it doesn't get me. I'm like, uh, I could look, I could look better. That could, this could look better. This could do better. And I'm not going to throw any, you know, anyone on the bus, but I've just, I've just seen that. And I'm just like, well, we're going to take our, I think we have C, C200s, Cam C200s, different lenses. And we're going to do with, the, we're going to do the best job we can with these cameras. Are there better cameras out there? Absolutely. There are, especially now. Um, we, we got this Canon C200 in there, gosh, years ago at this point. Um, I mean, we could have went with Canon, Canon 5 C, or C500s. We could have went with a lot of other options too, but we we didn't. And this is what we had uh, budget for. Um, and so and then that comes down to intentionality too. So we are lighting, like I said before, is super intentional with how we program. It's not tons of flash, not tons of deep saturation, it's a lot of whites, a lot of maybe shades, tints of like blues and ambers and maybe some light, light greens, just because we think that's the way that the cameras um, can capture the best look. I just, I don't, I don't, I, I personally, a lot of the, our guys don't like when you see like a dark blue on stage and like cameras like freaking out. Cause it's like, what am I supposed to be capturing right now? The, the wavelengths aren't matching up. And so that's kind of where we've taken our, our direction for, lighting and online and cameras is we're, we're shooting the room for online 
So our lighting is then programmed for online. And that's kind of where our, our, our growth, if you will, for our online presence and our online look and feel. And then obviously audio stuff. Um, we can talk about that too, but that's kind of where I like that. It sounds like, from. it sounds like you're very intentional and focused on what you want. And because you guys know what your goal is, it's real easy to tune to that. And Mark, I know that when uh, <clears throat> Dave and I came and toured the campus and we're just seeing the production setup, and of course, you know, ch as church gear, we come alongside and we partner with churches. We buy their unused older production gear. Toby, this is not a commercial. This is a podcast. It just turned into one. <laughs> so it was funny as John Clark is like, yeah, we'd, we'd love to sell you some gear. We don't have much because we kind of use everything <laughs> until it, mm -hmm. it doesn't work anymore. And so he was telling us about, I think you guys did a live event at the Red Rocks Amphitheater. And he said, yeah, we actually used like a Vista T2 as our, our lighting console. <laughs> and it, it barely worked, but it got us through. Um, Tell us about that uh, that live recording and like, do you have other just favorite moments from the last seventeen years at Red Rocks where it was like, oh it, gosh, this was quite the, um, yeah. quite so the I, night. <laughs> yeah, so actually, I wasn't there for um, any of the Red Rocks live recordings at Red Rocks Amphitheater. I should say, um, I was I think one time I was in the hospital with my son, and another time I think I was out of town with my daughter. <laughs> so I wasn't actually there part of those. Um, I think I think our, my boy Chase ran lights for at least one or both of those events. I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, I, I, from what I've heard, they uh, th there were some some dicey areas with you know some some technical aspects of things. And but I think I think at the end of the day, it worked out, and they did they did a great job. So, um, gosh, but some some favorite parts about Red Rocks. So we did um, twenty. At the fall of 2018, we did a huge conference called Red Weekend. We rented out Magnus Arena, which is at DU, Denver University. And we brought in, I don't know how many lights it was. I probably should look this up. Um, it was, I mean, over 100, 150 lights, maybe. BMFLs, um, a lot of a lot of blinders, strobes. We had some beam fixtures. I mean, there was it was a lot of lights. Um, we heard a company come, you know, rig it all up, set it all up. And I, I, at the time didn't know MA. So I trained myself in MA too for the, you know, for a couple months leading up to that. So, um, John and I both kind of ran, ran production for, as far as lighting goes for that red weekend. He did the live recording for Red Rocks worship. I did like the, the conference portion of it. Um, so that was, I mean, he was a cool experience. He was extremely stressful. And I don't think we'll ever do it again. <laughs> um, it's a lot of money and a lot of time and effort. And yeah, I was just, it was, it was a cool experience. I'm glad we did it. I don't think we'll ever do it again. Um, Those are fun moments in life so yeah, when you're, you're like, that was amazing and not anymore. Yeah, that was amazing. I don't ever, ever do it again. <laughs> um, you know, um, a lot of times when I would say, I don't want to do that anymore, it's when something goes wrong. Um, you know, when you're running, yeah. you're running with all this gear, kind of bootstrapping it bare bones. Hey, we're we're gonna run this gear until it goes down. Sometimes it goes down during the service. So I've got to imagine, like when you guys are growing that fast and doing so much, there had to be a moment where something went wrong. So do you have a you have a disaster story for us or two or oh, three yeah, absolutely. when the chainsaw oh, ripped got... through a PA? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I got a lot of, a lot of disaster stories. Um, man. So yeah, I mean, honestly, honestly, most of them come with power outages, and at Golden Campus, you know, up in the theme park area. So yeah, actually one of uh one of my first ones like, that comes to mind was so we were kind of auditioning a new worship pastor at this time at our golden campus up in the creepy theme park. And it was his first Sunday. I'm sure he was nervous. I'm sure he was like, okay, I do I gotta do good. So leadership, you know, likes what I like likes what I can do. And then uh nine o'clock service rolls around and power goes out in the whole building. House lights are flashing because we lost DMX and I'm like it's just all, it's all going to you know where. So um, we killed power to the house lights and the worship leader on stage was like, well, I, I guess I'm going to keep singing. So he sat on the front of the stage, acoustic guitar and all, and started playing and singing his little heart out. And as like a disaster of a moment it was, it was actually one of the coolest experiences I've ever seen as, as far as a production guy. Didn't have any lights, didn't have any audio, didn't have, I mean, no, no, nothing where we could hear project the worship leader from stage and he started singing and playing and people followed and so the congregation was just like 
belting it out. And did you hire, hire him? him in the back? Yeah, we did hire him. Oh, there you go. Um, I was hoping for yeah. him at that point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is you're just yeah, cheering right. this guy on now. It's like Rudy. <laughs> yeah, he had earned it. Yeah, he earned it. That earned it at that point. Um, yeah, and it was it was one of my coolest like experiences. Like, we don't. Yes, production is a cool tool to use, but at the end of the day, like God's going to show up whether you have a PA or not. So it was super cool to be a part of that experience and see that. And, and still, we talk about it to this day of how cool of an experience it was where, you know, we spend all this time, money and resources and all that jazz to get to this point and we lose power and don't have any of it. And then God still does his, what he does. And it was just super cool and kind of humbling to see. Um, so yeah, it was kind of a cool moment and disaster at the moment at the same time. <laughs> that is a really cool moment. I just love, uh, you know, what you guys do as far as doing a lot with a little. Obviously, for me, that's very close to my heart because I I hate seeing gear go to waste. And I know there are a lot of churches out there that have massive budgets and they have no problem, you know, dropping a million bucks on a new system. And just to see you guys be so successful by just kind of, as Blake said, like bootstrapping it and being good stewards. Yeah. Training your people well. Um, so I, I'm going to shift gears just a bit and we like to play games with our guests. Oh no. And <laughs> this is a perfect moment for Blake to try and do anything with how little he has. So, uh, in, in thematically correct, uh, order of Red Rocks church, we're going to play Red Rocks amphitheater trivia. So okay, I don't know if okay. you know anything about the history of Red Rocks amphitheater, but we have five questions to pit you and Blake against each other and winner takes all. Great. Blake, can I have a buzzer, please? Oh, boy. Also, Mark, just you know, the and that's the rules have changed, Toby. You're trying to say, if you know the answer, say it immediately when you have it, even yep. if you're interrupting him. Yeah. First person to shout out Got the it. answer gets the point. And with five questions... Okay. Did you have any more disaster stories? I was really hoping to hear a second. Oh, we, we can get one more after the game. <laughs> oh, we, uh, yeah. I mean, I got, I got more. Okay, this I game is going to be a total disaster <laughs> for Blake. Okay, here we go. So, oh, you know what? I only have four questions, so I'm just going to have to make up a fifth. That's a Toby <laughs> fail, right, to start. Okay. Are we ready? Great. Ready. Okay. Question number one. When was the first live show at Red Rocks Amphitheater? 1784. Closest year wins. Oh, 1975. Well, Mark wins. It was 1906. <laughs> Mine was a guess. Well, at I least he a... was in the correct <laughs> uh, century. Mine was a joke. Okay. <laughs> I, I know Blake's not going to know this. I'm, I'm seeing if you know this, Mark. What U2 record was recorded live there? In the name of love. Do, do, I've seen do. the video. I don't know what it is. I Shoot. almost, I'm not going to give you a point, Blake, but I almost want to because um, you actually named... One of the lyrics in the song? You named half of a U2 song title, but the name of the record is Under a Blood Red Sky. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of like dark imagery in Red Rocks. Like Red Rocks sounds super fun and quirky. And yeah. then you have Blood Red Sky and Chainsaws. Okay. Uh, next question. I can break this into two parts. So this will actually work out. What artist was the first to have a rock concert at Red Rocks Amphitheater? Elvis Presley. <laughs> what do you think, Mark? <laughs> oh. Are you a Speedwagon? speed wagon? The correct answer is The Beatles. No. Oh, I should guess that. Uh, <laughs> okay. What, what, did, the, did the stadium not have an insecticide? Like, what, did they what, have Beatles what, everywhere? What year? 1943. For the Beatles? Yeah. What year? Oh, uh, oh gosh. I don't, what year were the Beatles good? I don't know. Ah, oh, you kid. 1960. I don't know. We got 1964. <laughs> All right, Mark wins again. Okay. And a, a sure. cute little tidbit is that it did not sell out. No, yeah. really? They did not sell I out the Red Rocks their only non-sold out show. Okay, and your last question. This is a fascinating one. What medical technology did the Beatles require while on stage? Ooh. Uh, I'm going to say they were getting IV drips to like keep their endurance going slash doing a lot of drugs, I'm guessing. Mark, I was going to say oxygen. Mark is correct. They had oxygen masks. Of course, the high elevation. Yep. yep. Well, yep. Mark wins and Blake gets to spin the uh, <laughs> wheel of doom. Okay. So Blake, give that a spin. See what you win or lose today. Here we go. I'm going <laughs> to face it towards you, Mark, so I don't have to see what happens. 
And what'd you get? What'd I get? Uh, you got CEO for a day. CEO for a day. All right. I'm going to make some changes here at Church Gear. <laughs> I'm going to pull out the you order chart. You can't fire anybody on your day as CEO. Uh, Mark, you're hired. <laughs> you're coming to here to yeah. be my personal <laughs> trainer slash motivator. Blake, Love it. you as CEO for a day is a perfect transition back to another disaster, disaster story. It is. So, so Mark, if I was running production at, at Red Rocks, it would be a disaster. So give us one more because it, like, it sounds like you had one. Oh yeah, I for I mean I have more I have multiple, but yeah, I'll give you one more. Um, so ba- going back to that Red Weekend event where we had you know rented out the whole arena for a weekend, um, it was on one of the conference days, or maybe it's a I don't think it was a Sunday. One of the conference days, maybe it's Friday the first day, we were running behind on schedule for rehearsal, you know, sound check, all that jazz because it's a huge event, offsite, you know, whatever. So we're running behind, didn't have the time to check any content for the the message block the sermon block there was a video that we got um that we were not able didn't have time to check doors were opening like as a band's like walking off stage for our sound check and so like well we're let's hope this works um and so our head pastor senior pastor's on the stage and you know he cues up the video it's a testimony video and about three quarters of the way through it stops oh no like, what is happening um, it was like not a final version that we got or something like that. And our head pastor, your pastor on the stage was like in front of, you know, I don't know how many thousand people, 5,000 people was like, is that, is that, is that it? Is that what we got? Oh, like, no. <laughs> he actually didn't get saved, but oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we had to, you know, we cleared the video quick and then he kind of finished out the story, you know, on his mic. Anyway, moral of the story, always test your content before service starts <laughs> the first time seeing your content should not be during service i feel that rule you, number one you said you had a lot more give me one more if you got one more quick one because i just i love these this is sure. kind of my yeah. favorite segment honestly that we do yeah yeah so um another another one has to deal with power outages so we every year we do a, a youth event at our little, usually a little thing camp at least back in the day it was, at, it was at our little thing campus our broadcast campus and we had brought in like confetti cryo jets I programmed the heck out of the rig, um, just youth, just, I mean, just flash and trash basically. And um, right before the service was supposed to start, well, power went out. So, you need some generators at, at this point, place. Like, <laughs> I know. This was years, this was years ago. This was like, I don't know, eight years ago or something like that. Um, so like we ran extension cords from like other sources just for some sort of PA that we had, but like all my work, that had you know prep for and confetti and cryo jets and all the the special stuff that we had planned just didn't get to use it. I was so mad. <laughs> you couldn't like hotwire the confetti or hit it with a hammer or something. <laughs> no. Like your technology is just so cute, Blake. I just I refuse to give up. Yeah. I'm like I've got confetti. <laughs> I'm gonna fire it somehow. I know. I wanted to so bad. I don't think we got to though. You never got? Did you fire it after the power came back later that night? Just like um, it's a great question. I have no recollection. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, if you got to clean up the confetti afterwards, you'd probably want it to be a special moment, not just to see it. That's true. Man. That's, what, that's why we have interns. Ah, good point. That's we why we have Blake around should, here. No, wait a minute. We should get some interns. <laughs> hey, can I can I change CEO for the day to Blake gets an intern? That would be great. Lot, lots of work I could offload. Do you want like one of our guys to intern or do you want Mark to intern with your workout schedule? Uh, Mark is too qualified to be my intern. Um, yeah, but for one day. Well, that would be amazing. I, I would. Let's just... That'd let's just. Fun. Yeah, I'll let's do it. let's ship Mark here. We'll just get him in a box. We'll ship him on up. Bring him down. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to come to y'all's place. I've never seen the fall look as beautiful as I did in Denver. You know, you yellow. could have come if you hadn't stayed at the Airbnb, Blake. This is not fair. <laughs> Ouch. I was, Ouch. Re- you know, allegedly I was requested to clean the do the clean checkout so the other people could leave. But maybe that's given the option as a test. Okay. Well. Let's segue off of this where I'm getting barbecued. Uh, no difference, though. Um, <laughs> if I'm getting barbecued, is it like an Old Testament sacrifice to God? <laughs> is he just smelling the... I mean, the ch- I hear the chainsaw is firing up right now, Blake. Okay, well, Mark, I'd love to fire up a tech takeaway from you. Um, if you were giving this to a room full of techs and you were telling them something that would help their service, other than get an intern and have power to your place, what would you tell them? Yeah, good question. Um I mean, kind of going back to what I said before was take what you have and make the best of it. Um, so quick example was back at our golden campus, you know, we didn't have tons of lights, tons of things back then. It was just kind of running gun, maybe a few led lights, whatever. Um, and 
our our pastor at the time he was like hey let's let's revamp this a little bit let's like let's like what do we have that can make this a little bit sweeter and so i went rummaging around like our youth room or something like that and found like four four park hands like 50 dollar park hands from guitar center i was like yeah we can buy you some with these so and then i put them on the back of the stage kind of like had this cool like up light blinder light behind the worship band and got super intentional with the programming behind it and this was like i don't know 12 10 years ago something like that and got super intentional with the lighting um for that service and the feedback was awesome he loved it he had had a, something different to the worship experience that we'd never seen before and so from then on we were kind of like okay well i guess we are going to take what we have and make the best of it um and so you know if, if leadership wants to do new you know new new cool edgy things um like i said before they can that costs money and time and they have to understand that um but you got to take what you have and make the best of it um, and then try things and fail. Like you're not going to here learn from your mistakes, but then try new things based on what you've learned and then create intentionality with what you've learned. So if something didn't work right away, change it up, be intentional about what you have and then um, use that to your best of your ability, because that's when God's really going to show up in your life and your ministry and your church. I like that. Just having the boldness to try. I think a lot of times we feel the need to be perfect. And so if we can't make it perfect, we're not going to try. Like, as you say, and sometimes it works and it's amazing. And sometimes you'll learn something you can do next time. I've kind of made a whole career out of just failing a bunch and learning, you know, that's, that's been my whole MO. Have you learned? I've seen a lot of failure. Well, Toby, that's to be debated, but <laughs> well, Mark, uh, do we really appreciate you coming on? Do you have anything you want to, you want to plug yeah. anywhere? Someone should reach out to you. Or are you like, Hey, look, I got enough going on with the chainsaws and the, and the power outages. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that life is over. The chainsaws and power. power. <laughs> um, no, I mean not really. I mean, if people want to find me on Instagram, they can just Mark Ray. Um, is that I, where they I can download your fitness class? On there. Oh man, yeah, right. I should I should post something there. You should Here, post a fitness the, the church church production fitness plan one hundred and one. <laughs> That's actually I think you could yep. probably sell that to MXU. They'd probably push it on the fifty. The, what is it? Seventy five day challenge. Yeah, that'd be great. There you go. Well, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with us. We hope to see you back next week for more absurd stories, tech takeaways, and overall buffoonery here at the Church Gear Studios. Blake, I'm really glad that uh, cell phones and social media didn't exist back when I was in middle school and running across stages in my blue polka dot boxer shorts. I feel like that would really hamper my ability to run for office now. Oh, you're not, you're running for office now. We've already said enough well, incriminating things in this podcast. Well, if I wanted to run for office, wanted. like nobody has the, you know, the images to share on social media of me and my boxer shorts. That's true. And that's probably good. And it also, you know, kind of, it would be, uh, it would be questionable for a kid in boxer shorts to be on someone's phone at this point. <laughs> Uh, but you know, would not be questionable would be uh, them sharing something from this episode. I think that would be pretty fun. S- you know, posted. I think it'd be super fun. And with hashtag blue uh, polka dot boxer shorts. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or Mark's uh, production uh, workout challenge. Yeah. So if, if you want to do some workouts from this, juggle some chainsaws, uh, <laughs> legally not required. Uh, in to, your boxer shorts. In your boxer shorts. <laughs> or if you just want to reshare what we posted this week uh, and say something funny or quippy, uh, tag us and we'll repost it. We say something funny then. <laughs> <laughs>